Eric, Eric has no intention of throwing Josh, but he has every intention of harming him. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, uh, fake Tomoanagi, Yoko Tomoanagi, or side, or, or skipping in Tomoanagi, into Juju Gitami, right? So I'm going to plant this thing right up here, and I'm going to plant and turn myself. So I don't want to plant and fall on my back. I'm turning my hips and rolling into that thing. Take a look at this. So I'm stepping to the side, and I'm going to get my foot up across the waist. You can plant your foot on the hip, or you can put your foot past the hip. That kind of is what works for you. I like to get on the hip, pull them around, and from here it's it's your leg uh, legs right first, heels tight, knees tight. Take that arm, and it's just the arm bar drill from there. Now, some people will say, well, that's kind of dangerous. You're throwing yourself on the mat with force. You could hurt yourself. He's not. He's rolling himself under the mat. This is a classic transition. Let's look at some key points here, guys. So he's tying him up. So first of all, Eric's left arm is trapping Josh's right arm. See how he's trapped right at the, right at the uh, elbow here. And he's done that. Go ahead and tap that over the top. See how he it over the top? And now... He's turned, he's moved his body side to the side here because look at his left foot. His left foot's on the outside of his right foot, bringing this other foot there. So he's got room now to move this foot and put this foot up on the hip. And as he does that, he's going to spin under him and roll under him. He's actually going to roll right under him. So go ahead and take it away. See that? It's a rolling move. And I don't want to let go of nothing. I've got his collar and I've got his arm. I'm not letting go of this lapel until all of my leg work's dialed up. Two on one up top, isolate the arm. Where well, a lot of people will mess up on this is they'll start with the Now, they'll start, the mistake starts from the start. Is the way He's, he thinks he has to face him. Don't face him. Move to the side. So the reason why, you trap this arm better, ready to get your arm lock, and we need to move the side ready. And he's now, he's in a position he can swing under him, putting his foot in there. That's where a lot of people make the mistake. They try to do it straight on. And they just end up falling on their back, and it doesn't work. And by, by doing this, by coming sideways, now this permits me to put my foot up there and a control roll under, kick the leg over, and finish. You notice how I kick the leg over the head to control it, to help him roll onto his back. So put all these things together. Now this time, watch the same thing. But now watch Eric's right leg go over Josh's head to get him to continue to roll onto his back for the Juju Katana. See that? Just traps it. Almost it's like a Hosodakari. And that's the thing. There you go. So it's a, I mean, it's just a dynamite transition. And it's a very effective transition from standing to the ground. And again, it's Tomonagi, or Yoko Tomonagi, or side Tomonagi, you see the side leg, into Juju Do you have anything to add to that? Let me give us a bad posture to do it. Yeah, okay, give us a bad posture. This really works well against the bad posture. Absolutely. Right? This really works well against these guys, because he's, boy, he's got a nice hip to work on. Right. All this cool stuff. So go ahead. Awesome. Makes it easier to get to his head. <laughs> Bingo, it's easy to get yeah, to his head. This is, people, people ask me, especially judo people, they'll say, well, what do you do against a guy who's all bent over? Here's a great thing you can do against a guy who's all bent over. You know, don't think you have to throw him. I mean, you can still throw him if he's bent over. There are things you can do, obviously. But don't think you just have to throw him. You can do this. Okay, do that bent over again. And this is a, a good example of a guy is bent over, all crouched, Come to the side. Make right sure. Stiff arming me a little bit. Hard to get inside. That's not all bad. There you go. See that? So that side angle keeps you tough. Right? You want to have room to move under. And by moving to the side, you give yourself room to move under. Yeah. So, yeah, if a guy is bent over, this is a perfect thing. Again, if you can't throw the guy, you can still arm lock him. And he doesn't expect that arm lock in that position. Uh, one variation to that. Um, He's going, to, he's going to get his grip up and deeper. And you're going to put your knee in. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Right. So, so if I'm trying to get over to the side and he keeps squaring up, 
and staying in front of me, and I can't get out to the side, he's squaring up. I'm just going to plant this thing right in the waistline, right up the middle. So I'm going to plant this thing right up here, and I'm going to plant and turn myself. So I don't want to plant and fall on my back. I'm turning my hips and rolling into that thing. So he wanted me to emphasize my grip is up high, so I'm really keeping this arm. And if, if this guy won't let me get to the side, he won't let me get to the side, then I'm just going to plant it right in the middle, turn the corner, and I use my handles, my, my grips on the opponent to help myself turn in a small circle so I can go around it. One thing he does because he's got to get any closer is when he gets this deeper grip by my bicep, when he comes in, he pulls that into his chest. Right, so that slows my fall. Because if I'm back here and I put my thing, my, my leg up, I'm just gonna go thud on the ground. And Plus, if he does that, much space, no much space. give me space and go for it. Right. right, no good. This is a bad place. So that's the count. So that's why you've got to make sure compact grips. Right. Get a control that grip. So I'm sure going to close between the player. I can't get outside, so I'm gonna go right in the middle. Pull them around, take control. See, that's one thing that I, I, you know, I'll bring Sambo into this too because, and Judo has it as well, but I know uh, I learned a lot about space awareness, the, the spatial awareness between the bodies, studying Sambo, and of course I, I know they do it in Judo as well. I've written a lot about the Judo books, but controlling that space is essential, and what you brought up here, if there's too much space, you can nullify it, you can count it. Just look at it one more time. So, and it's do the cross. Now, when, but watch, he closes yeah, things up tight, and it might, they might have to work for a while. Might have to work some body movement around here, okay? And in that case, when he senses he's close enough, he's close enough to be able to do it. He can sh shoot the move. One, one, three. Get that. Get that. Do that. Yeah. All right. And proper from a close foot. Yeah. 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 Just, just uh, there you go. See, see the closeness in body space. That's essential for this thing to work. You gotta close the body space. That's, that's why that works. Okay. You guys wanna practice this before we wrap it up? We got more time. Okay. The cool. the cool stuff. Oh big big Well the counter that if you leave me too much space, I'm that's gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna gently put you down. Yeah, sure. So gonna do it. Boom. <laughs> you can go to home. So now you, don't, you don't wanna be that guy. No, you, you don't wanna be that guy. He so, tried to get two on me. But I countered him and did a shoulder sit. He still got the strategy. Yeah. This is why uh, grip fighting is so important, no matter what the jack sport it is, or, or tie-ups are so important in, in a no gi situation. You've got to control, by, by controlling the grip, you're controlling this, the, the, the space, you control a lot of tempo. You control, control a lot of things. This way gripping is so essential. And, and grip fighting and grip skills are so essential, no matter what the jack and grappling sport may be, judo, samba, whatever it is. So if, if, if I'm not aware of this, if I just you know, think, well, I'll just do this, and you think about it, I just want to make this big thing happen, you know, you got to think all these things are like building blocks, you know, and, and they build on each other. And then also you got to think about the mortar, the cement that holds those blocks together. There's a lot of little stuff that goes in there that you have to make that fit perfectly for you. He'll close the space a little bit differently than I will because our body types are different. Or a shorter, stockier athlete is going to close it a little bit differently. And you learn that through a lot of grip fighting, a lot of movement drills. That's why grip, gripping and movement are so essential in judo, sambo, jiu-jitsu, whatever we do. Uh, movement, and it's all based on good movement. You know, Jim Bregman said the, the key to great judo is, is good, great movement. Movement is what makes judo work. Same with sambo or jiu-jitsu. Do you mind if you do that one more time? Yeah, do it. Yeah, now, do it. since we're a shingen tie, he can do it with no jacket. Yeah, you want to do it. Just, just do it. Yeah. Well, just show the hey, control of no jacket. So you can do this in no gi. Look how he's got the arm. See, yeah, see how the wrap? See nice tie up there? Right? Put on it. Come around. And so from here, instead of the lapel, I you still got that neck. Right? And I'm not going to let go of that until all of my footwork's done. And I'm going to, you know, isolate his shoulder with all the heels tight, knees tight. And then I'll take that arm with me. Yeah. You make handles. My old coach Renee Pomerell said everything's a handle. You run this one? No, no you're going to do it. I'm just showing you, know, you tie up like this. Look how he's going to get control of this arm when we tie up. 
right? And I'm not gonna let go. He might fight here for a little while, and then I'll transition to the just arm. But I don't want to let go of that head until you're controlling his. And I, real quick, guys, I would train periodically, regularly, no gi. Because a lot of things, you know, some things, you know, you need a gi to work, obviously, some things. But if you can do a lot of these moves, just like we showed here, if you can do a, a no gi situation, I know that's not good, we can call it judo gi, do gi, keiko gi, whatever it may be. But a no gi training, just, you know, skin to skin type training, and, and you know, you know, whatever it may do without a jacket, it really will help your overall skill level. Okay, and, and whether, even if you're a strict competitive judo player, you know, train a lot as often as you can in a no-gi situation because it, it teaches you a lot more about controlling body movement and using your hands to manipulate and, and you know, grip. And like I said, everything's a handle. So don't get just reliant just on the jacket or the belt. You know, you can hook the body, use different things with the body too, just like you explained there. Get my foot up across the waist. You can plant your foot on the hip or you can put your foot past the hip. That's kind of what works for you. I like to get on the hip, pull them around. And from here, it's, it's your leg, uh, legs right first, heels tight, knees tight. Take that arm and it's just the arm bar drill from there.